As you board, please move across your car to make room for everyone and kindly offer available seating to those needing special assistance. If you're standing, please hold on to the handrails and stay clear of the doors. They will be closing in a moment. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Disney Assembled. I'm Troy. And I'm me. And we are your happy little father-daughter podcast, here to create joy and share our love for all things Disney. Disney Assembled is sponsored by our patrons over on Patreon, Brenda, Danny, Connie, and Andrew. Yes, thank you very much, guys, for joining us over on the Patreon side. If you would like to help the show out, become a member of our Patreon Disney Assembled family, we would really appreciate that. Head on over to our website, DisneyAssembled.com, and click on the Become a Patron button, or you can go to Patreon.com, do a search for Disney Assembled there. Membership starts as little as $2 a month. You get access to all the exclusive patron-only content that appears over there. Now, however, if you would like to add some additional Disney magic to your day, please check out Magic of the Mouse Radio. Magic of the Mouse Radio is the best internet radio station there is on the planet for all your Disney music. 24-7-365, Magic at a Mouse Radio.com is the place to go. You can hear our show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. In addition to being a part of the Magic at the Mouse Radio family, I am so proud to be part of the Magic at the Mouse News family. Magic at the Mouse News.com has articles for anything and everything Disney related that you might want to read. So make sure to go check it out. Yes, do that. And we would really, really appreciate it. So we're recording this episode on uh, Saturday night. This episode will come out on Sunday. Today's October 21st. October 21st. That's today. Yeah. And we normally don't record in the evening. So it's kind of a late night recording for us. We've had really busy days and lots going on around here. So we're trying to squeeze in our recording time uh, because it's important. Yeah. High five there. Good job for us. Yeah. Sticking to the plan. Hashtag making it work. Making it work. That's <laughs> right. We did a couple of things this week before we get into our main topic. Uh, but we today we watched uh, the uh, the third episode of Loki. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the third, third episode of and Loki. And we also watched the Once Upon a Studio short that appeared it was on ABC on Sunday, I believe. And one of World of Disney. It's on Disney Plus. Um, general thoughts from you on. Either I thought it was very those? good. I, oh, the one, the Once Upon a Studios. I thought that was very good. I thought it was very sweet. I couldn't believe it was 15 minutes long. And I felt like every time a character showed up, I was like, oh my gosh, look, it's Peter Pan. Oh my gosh, look, it's, you know, Snow White, uh, whatever. And I think the the cutest part of the the whole thing is when there's two, two moments. One is when um, the dog takes Eric's shoe off the staircase and Eric go, or uh, charming shoe off the staircase and charming goes, Eric, get your dog. Like, I think that's <laughs> so cute. Like they're, they're just buddies. They're just pals. Right. And then also when all the Winnie the Pooh and friends characters are trying to pull him out of his photo yeah. as the parallel to him being stuck in rabbit's house. I think that was so sweet. I enjoyed it a lot. I'll probably watch it again. It was very cute. It was very good. Yeah. It's probably not quite 15 minutes because there was probably a lot of credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, um, but it, um, yeah. It, it was much shorter than I anticipated it being. Yeah. It, was, it was so, so cute. If you haven't checked it out, you definitely should. It is worth the watch. Yeah. And Loki episode three looks I good. I am really enjoying Loki. Episode three had me hooked, had me locked in. Episode two had me locked in. Episode one, I was kind of like, Okay, like getting the same vibes as like Loki season one, episode two, bomb dropped. Episode three, bomb shell exploded. Boom. Yeah, um, loving Loki. Yep. Good. Anything else you want to talk about before we get into the main topic of the um, week? Or? I don't think there's anything going on. Um, I just ask um, the public for restaurant reservation ideas for if we were to theoretically somehow maybe be in Walt Disney World um later in yeah. time yeah. maybe possibly yeah. what are some restaurants that you guys recommend so like we're looking for restaurants we haven't been to and obviously you guys don't know exactly which restaurants we've been to right but recommendations 
of any kind would be useful, maybe, if we go back. Yeah, if we go back, <laughs> you know, theoretically, I mean, we, we put a question out recently about if we happen to be there for New Year's Eve night, you know, which park would we be in? But along the same lines, if for some reason Disney Assembled happens to be at Walt Disney World in Florida at some point between, eh, you know, just before New Year's all the way through just eh, after New Year's the first uh, week of January or so, if we happen to be there, if there are any restaurants you think we should check out, We'd love to hear about them. So that's this week's question of the week. We didn't have a question of the week last week. We have one this week. Recommend a Disney World restaurant for us to potentially check out. We've eaten at quite a few. We haven't re- eaten at all of them. And we haven't really done a lot of food reviews. So we should probably pay attention this time and <laughs> what we eat. Because maybe we can talk yeah, a little about our dining I have experiences. Some, I have some if we social to go. media. I'm not saying we're definitely going to go. The last but. time we went, I made TikTok vlogs. And I have been carefully crafting a list of social media slash TikTok post ideas to create while we are maybe in Walt Disney World. If we happen to do that. I have some things running in my head. Good. Good stuff. Yeah, we can do that. So um, main topic of the week. Do you want to get yeah. into that or anything else you want to share with anyone about what's going on I don't on in the think world? so. Oh, I submitted to 10 colleges. So I've you are in the colleges. middle of college application season. I am. Yes. So I am applying to a grand total of 22 schools and <laughs> universities. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Wow, Mimi, that is so many universities. Why are you doing that? Well, because I don't know what part of the country I want to live in. So I'm applying to schools all over the place. Some in the Midwest, some up in D.C., some in California, some in Washington, Oregon, some here in Texas. None, uh, no others in the South, just the University of Texas at Austin. but. Of those 22, 12 of them don't have early action deadlines. Mm. So, which means that they aren't due November 1st. They, they have to be due in January. So, I've been focusing on the 10 of them that are due November 1st, and I have submitted all 10 of them. So, I'm done with college ops for at least the next week, and then I have to roll into some like honors college deadlines in December and then start focusing on. The UCs that are due November 30th, and then I've got to focus on some other stuff. But yeah, I'm in the middle, the trenches of college apps, and it's honestly not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. Yeah, well. Someone asked me how it was doing, like one of my aunts was like, how was it? Because her, like my cousin went through it last, summer, last year, and she was like, if you're not saying that it's terrible and horrible, it, you're probably doing it wrong. And I don't find it terrible and horrible. I think it's, it's like, it's kind of fun in a like weird, twisted way. And you should be getting some answers in the next couple of months, you know, and uh, yeah. make some decisions. So I hear back up. from these November 1st deadlines um, starting in mid-December ex- um, going through January. And then I'll hear back from the January deadlines closer to March. So potentially not long after our supposed 200th episode, which is coming up right around my birthday weekend. Right. We talked about that. On your birthday, I think. Yeah, we should be getting some notices not long after that. Yeah. I nice. already have one notice. You did get one. I have yeah. I have some news, guys. I got into college. You Hooray. Did get into, you Everybody got, get yeah, excited. Was the first, yeah, congratulations. Yeah. All right. Good, I did good. get into college. I got into the University of Missouri in Columbia, in Missouri. And um I got a scholarship from them and I would be studying constitutional democracy if I went there. So right. I did get in. So, so we got our first answer and then we first answer. I am definitely, yeah, I'm definitely going to college somewhere <laughs> and that's what matters. Well, congratulations. Boom. I know you're working really hard. I know you're excited to see what uh, comes your way, what you have to pick from, and then we'll have to make a tough choice. I'm really excited for like the reveal. Like I think the episode in on like the week of May 1st, the episode should not be about Disney. It should be like countdown to like, Mimi's college reveal and they'll be like surprise I'm going to Berkeley like you know whatever uh, like something yeah, crazy well, like that uh, well, so I'll go to Berkeley if $75,000 just happens to fall into our laps yeah well we need more patrons <laughs> <laughs> the Patreon family has to step up their game the Patreon family has to step up their game anyway so, that's my yeah, personal life there isn't too much going on in the Disney universe just lots of shopping oh the Ahsoka Tano lounge fly bag is the cutest lounge fly bag I've ever seen in my it life is cute oh my goodness gracious I want this bag patrons step it up yeah good drop stuff. drop me eighty eight dollars so I can buy that bag well, please I mean I, well, you have a job so go buy your own bag I do so have a job but I have to spend it on um Starbucks and gas money you don't have to spend and it on plane Starbucks tickets and gas money. you choose to spend it on Starbucks and gas money well I have to spend well, it on gas, gas. Money, you have to spend it on the plane gas. tickets not so much the concert tickets right. definitely not 
Guys, I bought <laughs> Noah Khan tickets and Olivia Rodrigo tickets in the same week. My bank account is hurting. Yeah. Well, anyway, moving on. Speaking of, and there's an event coming up pretty soon. Um, it is traveling actually around the country. And I did think, I, I want to mention it in the show because we were contacted by um, some people representing this show. It's not an official Disney show, but I do think I want to give them a shout out because I think what they're doing is fantastic. I did watch some YouTube videos of some of the performances that are going around and it is absolutely fantastic. I am not sure if you and I are going to be able to go because I think you have plans uh, when when this is coming near Disney Assembled Headquarters. But I want to bring everyone's attention to When You Wish Upon a Star, which is a jazz tribute to a 100 years of Disney being performed by the IMG artists. Uh, IMG artists are presenting this show um, and it is traveling around the country currently. Um, I don't have all the dates in front of me now, but I do know there are a bunch of dates coming up really soon as we're recording this episode on the 21st of October, right? They're yeah. going to be in Malibu, California on the 24th of October. So that's coming up in a couple of days. So there, if you're the 22nd, they're uh Wenatchee, uh, Washington, right? And tonight on the 21st, as we are recording this possibly right now in Long Beach, California, uh, well, wait, am I reading this wrong? I'm probably reading this wrong. 21st, uh, Glen Ellen, Illinois, looks like maybe on the 21st. Very I cool. can't read. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bad reader. But, but they are going to be in Malibu, which is super cool. Like Malibu Barbie. Yeah. I think they, I think they were. So they're going to be close to Disney Civil headquarters um, sometime in early in, November. In mid, uh, early mid November. I don't know if we're going to be able to go. I think they contacted us about the potential of getting us some press passes if we're able to go. Um, but guys, it's just, I want to give them a shout out because they've been so kind online. They reached out to us with an email. Um, and, uh, we are, we want to, we told them we would promote the show a little bit. So we're going to do that. So if you, uh, check it out, go to, uh, do a Google search for, uh, when you wish upon a star, a jazz tribute to a hundred years of Disney. Perhaps there's a show coming near you. And if there is, you should go check, check it out. out. It'd be yeah. lots of fun. If you like jazz, you like Disney music, it will be a fantastic show for sure. We'll have more about that, you know, in the weeks to come. Right. Cause I did say we were going to. Help them promote their show a little bit. But Mimi. Yeah. We have a topic this week because we are continuing with the spooky, scary, spooky Sundays. Spooky, scary Sundays. Spooky, scary Sundays or scary, spooky Sundays either way. And we're going to get evil this week, aren't we? I guess so. Yes, we are. So (laughs) one of our top episodes ever on this show, one of the most listened to episodes was when we actually ranked Disney villains. And this would have been. Whose idea was that? I think it was your idea. Yeah, it was my idea. And you were like, that's such a basic idea. It's pretty mm-hmm. basic. It was so basic. It was the most listened to show, most downloaded mm-hmm. show in the history of Disney Assembled. But it was way back, like two Halloween seasons ago, right? Not even last year. I think it was the year before. It's like yeah, maybe it our very first. It was like the Halloween of 2021. Right. And we went through that. And there have been plenty of villains that have come and gone since then. We're not going to count down like our top villains this episode. We're just going to take a look at a couple of lists that have been put out by other entities that are the most evil animated Disney villains. And we're going to rank those villains on a scale of, you know, what we should come up with a scale for this. Like one to five what? Yeah. Like, I think it's like, I think it's like from... Should we put it in terms of like other villains from like different like franchises? Well, it could be like, you know, I how, think many poison, like- how about this? How many poisoned apples? Because of the, the, okay. the witch. Okay. So Fine. how many, like one to five, we're going to rank them one to five poison apples. What apple. about how many hearts stolen? Because she also did that. I like the poison apple. <laughs> I like the image of the poison apple. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll do poison, poison apples. Apple. We'll rank them one to five poison apples. We're just going to go down the list. We'll tell you what the list came from so you can check them out if you want online. It's fine. Um, it's an online list because. Yeah, we, it's an online list. Yeah. We didn't make a list this week. We didn't want it because we already did. We already ranked our favorite villains. This is different. We're going to count down. We're going to do our um, poison apple ranking rating. It's more of a rating than a ranking. Yeah. So we're going to be rating the most evil. Let's Disney start animated villains. All right. Is that this week's? Yeah, that this is week's this main week's topic. topic. Week. But we can't do that yet. We have not yet had the Disney dad joke of the week. Oh my gosh. We have to have that before we do the main topic of the week. We do that all the week, right? We do, well, every week we do that. Yes. Right, every right, week right. we this, do the Disney dad do, joke. It's time to do the thing, right? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for this week's Disney dad joke of the week. Oh boy. Mimi. Yeah. 
Moana's Journey of Water. Oh, I watched that today. It's it's it seems to be a really decent attraction. Lots of water in there. However, there is some concern that in the hottest months of the year, there won't be enough water in the attraction. As a matter of fact, they're thinking about even having to close the attraction down during the hottest months of the year. Is this like a setup for the joke or is this like a legitimate conversation that they've been having? This is like the joke. Okay, cool. <laughs> Should well, sometimes start, you like start put, over. Well, sometimes you put like facts in the joke. Well, it's because it's I wanted like, to sound official. Okay, continue. They they're thinking about closing it for the summer. Yeah, but they're afraid it'll be missed. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Because when yes. water gets too hot, yes, it missed. turns into mist. Yes, that's and funny. They, they're afraid it'll get missed. It'll, it'll be missed. That's funny. <sighs> Thanks for messing up the setup. I didn't mess up the setup. I was just concerned <laughs> because I wanted to, I was like. I was telling that joke so well. You like <laughs> thought I was being serious. <laughs> well, when we were like talking about Disney news and you didn't bring up the fact that they were concerned about the water usage for Moana Journey of Water. I was like really concerned. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. bad podcasting moment. Uh, okay. You just had me convinced. No big deal. Right. Anyway, this, this rank, this list is top 15 most evil Disney animated villains. And it's from Game Rant. So Game Rant, and this was actually uh, updated in July of 2023. So not too terribly long ago this past summer. But that means it has like updated villains. It's not villains right. from like five years ago. Right. I think that's part of the reason why they wanted to update is because they, you know, it's updated. You know, because there's, you know, there's new stuff, new stuff, right? You okay. Know, whatever, right? These are Disney animated villains, right? This isn't like live action people. All right. So uh, do you want to read it and, or what do you want to do? You want me to read it? For, you want me to read I it straight read from it. the screen? Or what, how do you want to do it? I'll just read it. Okay. okay. So they, We're the first one on the list is Yzma from the Emperor's New Groove. Um, Emperor's New Groove is one of the most... Which one should I read? Which paragraph? Oh, Whichever one you want. Yeah, yeah. We'll read the... Well, whatever. Okay. Read that. The Emperor's New Groove is one of the most underrated Disney movies of the 21st century, and its main antagonist, Yzma, one of the most underrated Disney villains. Together with the help of her lovable yet dim-witted assistant, Kronk, she concocts an evil plan to murder the intolerably arrogant Emperor Kuzco and steal his place on the throne. All right. Yeah. So, Yzma is their 15th most evil on game rant. I would not have put her in the top 15. I think there are other villains that aren't on this list. Cause we're going to do that at the end. We're going to talk about which villains are not on this not list. that we list. think are more evil than the ones that are actually on the list. Okay. Yeah. So I'd I give her like two poison apples. Okay, I, I think two poison apples is where I was going with this too. Cause her think, plan, her plan is kind of basic, but like she did try to like poison him. And I think poison is poison is like something you have to like think about doing actively. You know, it's not just like, waving your magic wand sort of passively and you're like oh whatever but like you have to intentionally like put the poison in his food and serve it to him and so i think that earns an extra apple yeah i think um i think two apples two poison apples for yzma in terms of her evilness she's also very silly the silliness cancels out her her evilness okay moving on to number 14 the number 14 is the queen of hearts from alice in wonderland just like the book in which it was based alice in wonderland is wonderfully bizarre it features some of the most unusual characters to ever grace the disney movie to ever grace a disney movie He's drawn many comparisons to sensitive subjects like mental illness and psychedelic drug use over the years. The Queen of Hearts is far from the strangest character, but she is definitely the most evil in the story. Hers is a special brand of cruelty, too, with the childish monarch opting to vent her frustrations on innocent bystanders and live animals, handing out death sentences as if they were candy. Okay, so this kind of touches on my point with this Sorry, I just got totally jump scared by the next one on this list. (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. Um, The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts gets 3.5, almost four poison apples because animal cruelty. She just beats animals over the head. That's crazy. The taking out her anger on everyone else. But really what gets me about this woman is that she just beheads people left and right. And like, yes, she's a mockery of the victorian crown and like the beheading and like that era and that's that's what it's based on blah 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 blah, whatever she she just cuts off people's heads and i think that's insane that's crazy that is crazy 3.5 i'm I'm gonna give it just uh three poison apples here she's a little bit more evil than yzma but (sighs) alice in wonderland is just so ridiculously bonkers (laughs) that 
I need more realism for it to be more evil for me. I guess so that's I, fair. I'm going to give her, actually, I'm going to go two and a half, two and a half poison apples for the queen of hearts for me. Okay, not, yeah. not as evil as, I think there are more evil people that aren't on this list, but. Yeah, she's, she's quirky. And we should probably think about out. what we're going to read before, because I read like stuff I didn't need to read on that. Yeah. One, and we're all reading exactly from the game rant. Oh, article. look at that. Oh, I think so, I've got it. Okay. Number 13. Number 13. The hunter from Bambi. Man is in the forest. Man is in the forest. <laughs> Though viewers never get a proper look at the hunter who killed Bambi's mother, that doesn't make them any less effective as a villain. In fact, the fact that their face is never properly shown only serves to strengthen the idea that when it comes to the destruction of nature and wildlife, humanity itself is one of the planet's greatest threats. The hunter gets... I would rank the hunter very high. However, this is something that happens every single day in real life. And I think that I'm just thinking about the like irony of putting the hunter from Bambi thir- number 13th on your top most evil villains when this happens literally every single day. Here's what I'm going to say about the hunter. I'm not a hunter, but I don't think people who hunt are necessarily bad people unless let me rephrase that. There are certain types of hunting that I think are deplorable personally, (laughs) but I I don't think that the hunter in and of himself as a, or I'm guessing it's a male hunter could be a female hunter for all we know. We don't know. It says man is in the forest. So I guess because the animals say that in the movie, man is in the forest. It's so sad. Um, Listen, the hunter was just doing the hunting thing. I don't think there was anything necessarily overtly evil about being a hunter right Mm -hmm. so i I can't really give the hunter a whole lot in terms of poison apples on this because it only i I don't i I don't want to go too far the hunter is I, i am not a hunter i don't hate people who hunt i don't it doesn't bother me terribly unless you're a hunter of you know, game that has been trapped in you know those those big safari hunts, right? Where they're just for no well, reason, right? That's just poaching. waste. Yeah. But if you're hunting for food for your families, I, I don't have a problem with that necessarily. So I, I think it's I think because the hunter is not intentionally out to hurt. Well he is, but not he's not out to be evil toward any animal. He's right. just out to he's just hunting. shoot and kill them. Right. Which I guess makes and sense again, to some people. Guess, so I'm I'm not I'm going to go on a limb here and I'm going to, we're not, this is a Disney podcast. We want to keep it positive and we love Disney and they had to have some kind of a, an event in this story to move the story along. Hey, I get the, it. the conflict and Bambi's that based in, on a book, right? I yeah. Mean, so, I mean, the conflict of this is so effective with the story, right? Well, like I know it, people it listen, so well. go, oh, Troy, you just don't want to offend anybody. Well, I, I, I legitimately don't, it doesn't, I just don't think the hunter in Bambi isn't, quote evil character. I don't think yeah. he had an evil scheme to like, ooh, there's the 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 mother of this this you know this little doe or fawn or whatever Bambi was. And so I'm gonna take it out. I mean, I don't think there was any evil intent. So I, I just Yeah I can't give I can't the give hunter any poison apples for being a hunter. Now, if this was like a big game hunter and he's hunting, you know, if this was like what's his face from Tarzan, animals, right, we would have a different, right, a different conversation right, that'd here. Be different, but no, yeah, no. I just think the hunter like is less of an Clayton, evil. Clayton's Clayton. the character from Tarzan. I think if the hunter was more was less was more of an evil character and less of a plot device to move the story along, I would be able to rate it as a villain. But what if Clayton was the hunter in Bambi? Okay, we're not going into All that. Right, Pixar one. theory, not for now. All right, next one. Um, number 12, Gaston. I Gaston. So Gaston is on the list. Do you want to read a little bit yeah, about Gaston? I mean, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Whichever I mean, way one slices it, Gaston is an all around terrible person. For starters, he's incredibly vain and displays elements of toxic masculinity when it comes to his refusal to accept that Belle isn't interested in a relationship. That is one sentence, you guys. This neckbeard level of entitlement makes the character practically impossible to sympathize with which in turn forces viewers to see him as the out and out villain of the story personally he's relatable he's just like me he's not like you <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking guys i'm being so sarcastic. here's the deal being um being a guy an makes egotistical him the villain. maniac <laughs> doesn't necessarily make you evil what makes gaston evil is how he treated bell how he tried to kill the beast how, and how he, he treated Bell's father. How he treated Bell's father, basically, you know, trying to uh, incarcerate him, him yeah. to get the daughter to marry him. I mean, that's pretty darn evil. Yeah. 
but there are more evil people. Gaston's just a jerk. I mean, the fact of the matter is just a jerk. See, but it's like, I just, like, I've met people like Gaston. Like, I've met the kind of person that Gaston is making a mockery of. And they are awful. Do they and eat I, lots of eggs and decorate their no, cars with antlers? No, they just don't know when to shut up, ever. They don't. Ever. They'd never know when to shut up. And I would, like, Gaston isn't necessarily evil. He's horrible, but he's not evil. I give Gaston two poison apples, just like Yzma. I think he is a different kind of bad he, guy. Yeah, he's a different kind of But I think on the scale, he's about the same level of evil in my mind, as Yzma. I think it's because he's not out to actively get anyone. Does that make sense? Like, there's there's a very clear sort of hatred that the evil queen has towards Snow White. There's a very clear hatred that right. Cruella has for the puppies, you know, whatever. Or even um, I think he generally Maleficent. likes LeFou. Yeah, like, there's a very clear, got, like, you know, with these other examples, I mean, the, the Queen of Hearts arguably is female Gaston, right? right? But um Gaston isn't necessarily out to get anyone. He just hates that things don't go his way. So that isn't evil. That's just immature. So I'd give it to Poison Apples. All right. We're going to move on because we're going to be here forever if we're going to get through 15 of these bad boys, so to speak. Okay. So number 11 is Randall from Monsters, Inc. Now, I'm going to skip to the chase on Randall instead of reading all this stuff. Randall... Snuck in the kids' rooms, made him scream, had the big plan to, to win this. No, the he scarathon. snuck in the rooms, stole the kids, put them in the machine, and then extracted the screams from the children as they screamed he in the machine. He was basically just doing his job. No, he was not doing his job. His job was not to kidnap children and extract their screams from their bodies, killing them. That is freaky and evil, and he gets four poison he wasn't apples. Killing any Randall kids. is a freak loser. Randall was not freak killing any kids. Loser. He's not killing kids. He was going to kill kids. That like the machine that Boo was hooked up to was supposed to kill her. I thought he was trying to get trying to get rid of Mike. He was trying to do his job. Look, Look Randall no. was a schemer, but he wasn't. Randall then tries to murder Mike and is more than happy to subject a two year old child to the scream extractor, a terrifying machine to scare the life out of kids and suck up their fear like a vacuum. Boom. Well. Evil for. Apples. He was bro. just an overachiever at his job. No, he was just a sad, lonely loser in college. And Mike and Sully got popular and left him behind. And he tried to take it out on All them. Right, we got to rate him. I'm giving him two apples. He gets four apples. He's a four freak apple. Loser. He's a four apple. He guy? put a two year old in a machine and then tried to kill it. That's whack doodle. That is whack a doodle. Like yes, he's an overachiever, but like I'm you giving are Randall crazy. Two. I'm giving Randall two poison okay, apples. Okay, fine, <laughs> whatever. Ten. Shere Man Khan. just wanted a promotion. <laughs> no, number ten is Shere Khan. Hey, right, Shere Khan. Shere right. Khan's not evil. He's just scared. Two apples. Next. What do you mean? <laughs> not evil. He's literally hunting Mowgli down because he was scared that the fire was going to that the the fire no, of man the, was going to kill him like it killed his family. Shere Khan is pretty darn evil. Shere Khan has a valid he motive. He sent Ka to go get him. Hey, if I was a tiger and man came into my... Hey, all I'm saying is, if Shere Khan was in the forest where Bambi lived, Bambi's mom would not have died. And it would have been valid. I wouldn't want man in my jungle either. How many poison apples are you giving Shere Khan? Two. Two? He did try to eat a little kid, which is a little weird. All right, I'm going to give Shere Khan three poison apples. But he's never, he never like goes, he doesn't go after any of the other characters in the movie. He does, he, he beats up on Baloo. Because Baloo is protecting Mowgli, but he's not out to get Baloo. He's out to get Mowgli. Uh, three, three poison apples. Okay, fine. All right. <laughs> all right. Such a good one. Sid from Toy Story. Now we all know Sid. Sid did pretty bad things with toys. But I wouldn't say he's evil. It, it just, he comes, you see, okay, the movie manipulates him to seem evil because the movie's from the toy's perspective. From the toy perspective, they're being tortured by Sid. But from a human perspective, to- Sid is just a sad, lonely loser T- who has nothing better to do with his Sid time but take great pleasure toys. in disfiguring his toys. Like, is it, is it like psychopathic material and some weird red flags of behavior? Yes. But I wouldn't necessarily say it's evil like he's not out to hurt them like he doesn't know that they're alive right like he doesn't know that he's hurting them right who among us hasn't abused a toy once in a while a weird barbie guys i mean, I mean like he doesn't know he's hurting the toys I, one apple i mean he's a little weird no but he did try to hurt his sister two apples i give i give sid two poison apples 
maybe one and a half. It's toys. I just think like, well, it. he was actually quite creative. I mean, like, it, is it a little weird that he tried to fire Woody into the sun on a, on a firework? Yes. But like, if you're trying to tell me Who that. Who among us hasn't tied a, a plastic army man to a firecracker? Right, like, if you're trying off. to tell me that, like, every seven year old boy hasn't thought about doing that, like, you're wrong. Who among us hasn't tried to change the heads on their action figures to see what it would look like on a different body? Who? Weird Barbie us? exists, not- guys, for okay. a reason. Weird Barbie exists for a reason. Kate right, McKinnon two. told you guys about Weird Barbie. Two poison apples and for Sid. Sid is just. I'm giving Sid two apples. Okay, Jafar. Janir. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jafar. Jafar. All right. He's selfish. He tries, he doesn't necessarily try to kill. He's trying to get Princess Jasmine to love him, and he's trying to use the magic to do that. So he's like. He's like power hungry creepy. for this he's magic. Like a, he's like this creepy stalker. He's like a creepy stalker. And he also wants the dude. power. I give him five poison apples for the fact that he's probably in his 40s and Jasmine is a child. And that's enough for me. Next. I think. None the rest. The rest of it is a moot point. I think Jasmine Jafar, is a kid. I think Jafar did some pretty evil things and was kind of a, a scummy guy. Right. I think he needs therapy. <laughs> I'm giving Jafar. Listen, Does I haven't gone therapy? higher. The highest I've gone so far is three poison apples. I have not gone more than three. Jafar's getting three and a half poison apples from me. Oh, wow. Three and a half. He is now my most evil on this list. Why, though? I just, I think. You just get the creepy vibes from him? I mean, the whole magic and he's trying to get Aladdin stuck in the, the, the cave and and using the genie and getting the power and trying to get the, it just, yeah. Okay. Evil. Fair. I think he's an evil. His plan, plan was he well thought out though. Plan. All right. Number seven is on you list. You say it. Ursula from the little mermaid. Now we all know Ursula from the little mermaid. She, she gives you what you want and she takes your soul, but she guarantees you can't actually come through in the thing. So she's, she's collecting all these souls and she's she basically, is she trying to take over the, the 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 sea? I don't really know what her motivation is, but she is one manipulative queen. I mean, she turns into the other look. Vanessa, one. Vanessa, is that the one? And yeah, tries to steal Prince Eric, and like all I'm saying is, like, she does malicious things just for the sake of being malicious. Like, to our knowledge, I mean, you learn in the sequel that it's because. Ariel's mom like stole King Triton from her. So she turned evil. But like, but like in the first movie, Ursula is just an evil sea witch for the sake of being an evil sea witch. And to me, that's super evil. Boom. She's pretty evil. And as a matter of fact, I think her plan, she's been working on this plan for a while. She's got plenty of, you know, poor, unfortunate souls down in her lair. Yeah. She's been doing this for a long time. She's been quite successful at it, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. I think she's, she's a business she's, woman. She really knows what she was doing. Ursula, for me, four. Yeah, I give her four apples, poison apples. Four poison apples. Really quite devious. All right. Number six, Hades. Hades is just a gal, you guys. Hades is, Hades is just a girl. He was trying to, he's just he was a trying teenage to destroy girl. all of the... No, uh, he's uh, just a teenage girl, guys. He's Hades just a was guy. trying to destroy everything and take over everything. I give him he's two He's trying to kill apples. Hercules. Baby Hercules, he's trying to kill it. I would he give said, him two him. apples. Two? He's pretty evil. He's just a baby. He's just a guy. He was trying. It's like how when I hit the curb in my car, I'm like, I'm just a teenage girl. It's fine. When I'm going, when I'm going 90 and 75s, I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. He was trying to kill the whole family. But like, why? Because he wanted to take over. He wanted to be in charge of everything. I would let him be in charge. He's like, he's like sassy. He's just a sassy guy. I mean, he's kind of funny. The sassy man epidemic is taking over and it started with Hades. Hades is evil. He's pretty, pretty evil. I'd give him two. He tried to kill a baby. Okay. So did, um, what's her face and you didn't say anything about it. You don't even know her name. <laughs> Hades gets four poison apples. Four? Three and a half. He's a three and a half her. Who else got three and a half for me? Jafar. Jafar. He and Jafar are about the same for me. Okay. I'm giving well, him Hades is like likable, so I can't like give him any more. All right, number five is the evil queen from Snow White. Okay, she's gonna get minimum of four because she tried at lengths to kill Snow White. Listen, the she whole tried poison to, apple thing came from her. She tried to shoot her. She tried to shoot her. Stab her, like stab her heart out. She tried. Then she tried the poison she sent apple. The guy thing. to go get her to cut her heart out and bring it back in the box, right? 
and he brought the pig's heart back. Yeah. Yeah. He, How did she, she try to shoot him? Shoot I her. thought they sent out hunters to shoot her, so. and then she sent out the guy with the and then dagger. He, and then he, she locked that guy up in the dungeon, like, forever. And the, the mirror, she just wants compliments all the time. Bro, this is female Gaston right here. The evil queen. She's just like me, though. She's relatable. In the first animated feature, she set the standard. It's because she wanted and the it prince. Is yet, it has not been met very often by others. The evil queen gets five poison apples in my yeah. mind. She is, she gets all of them. She gets all the poison apples. Yeah. Fair. I mean, I, I mean, that's she, valid. I mean, she would have taken out those seven dwarves if she had a it's chance. Cause too. she wanted the prince. Like she's just a jealous, a jealous gal. Like I get her. Like I, I, I relate with her. Number four on our list, not our list, game rant.com's list. Scar. Okay. From the Lion King. Scar killed his brother and tried to kill his nephew. And that is pretty wackadoodle to me. What Scar, do you is, Scar is pretty evil. Scar is super evil. And he just, he wants to take over Pride Rock and he works with all the hyenas and he tried to kill baby Simba and he tried, and then he killed Mufasa, his brother. He is a little bit funny though. I, I, listen, Scar is five, five apples. Five apples? I'm giving I give Scar him four. Five. I give Scar five. He is pretty darn bad. He is on the, he, he killed his brother. Tried to kill his nephew. He should have did the job. Of him. Maybe he should have just did it when he had a chance. Why didn't he? I don't really he know. Just a swipe of the claw. Could have been done. No, because Simba was like such a weak baby. Like he could have just like, wow. And Simba would have been done for. He gets, he gets minus one apple because he's not very smart. He's pretty bright. I mean, he is, but like, why didn't he just kill Simba earlier? I'm giving him five. Okay. He gets five. All right. Next on the list, number three is... Sleeping Beauty. Or Maleficent from Sleeping Sleeping Beauty. Beauty. (laughs) Sleeping Beauty's not so evil. Okay. Off the bat for me, Maleficent is going to get five poison apples because she literally cursed a baby. She cursed a baby to die when she was 16 and to just live with the fact that she was going to die at 16. She cursed a baby. A baby. And then she turned into a dragon. And then she turned into a dragon. Heartburn. And destroyed the and destroyed the castle. That is crazy. You know, Maleficent's even, more scary than evil. What's crazy about this to me is we don't actually learn the it's context. She wasn't invited to the to the wedding or something. No, it was because the prince like was supposed to marry her, but the prince cut off her wings. She used to have wings. Are you talking but about you don't that learn, live action? I'm you, talking no, about the animated. No, the live action is canon. You just don't learn about any of the context until the live action came out. And so from the animated point of view, she just cursed a baby for no reason. Oh my gosh, there's my kitty. All right, I'm giving Maleficent four poison apples. Okay. How many apples do you give her? Five. All right. Captain Number Hook. Two. We only have two left on yeah, this sorry, list. Yeah, sorry. I jumped. Jump, Captain jump. Hook. Captain Hook. Listen, he tried to kidnap children. He did kidnap children. He did kidnap children. He tried to kill them. But those children cut off his hand and fed it to a crocodile no, that's not perpetually hunting him. Peter Pan him. cut off his hand. Peter Pan cut off his hand to a crocodile that is perpetually hunting him. So his motivation is he, valid. But he tried to kill Tiger Lily. He tried. He had Wendy walk the plank. I would have Wendy walk the plank too. She's so whiny. She's not God. whiny. Stay here, kids. It wasn't her fault. She didn't do anything <sighs> wrong. I'm going to be Tinkerbell for Halloween, you guys. Anyway, I just wanted to share Captain that. Captain Hook is pretty evil because he's messing with kids. Yeah, that's fair. But I think he's still a, a three apple guy. He's just like a likable character. He's a three apple guy. I just I can't really explain it. I just really like Captain Hook as How a many character. Poison apples? Three. I was going to say three. Right. Okay. We're now at number one. one. So before we get, well, should we do number one and then do some of our ones that weren't on the list that should have been on the list? Sure. Okay. We can do number that. Number one is Cruella DeVille. All right. Mimi, why is Cruella on the list to begin with? Cruella hunted puppies to take their fur and make a coat out of their fur. Dalmatian puppies, super rare Dalmatian puppies. Not only did she trace down these puppies, she literally hunted them over a very long time. A very, very, very like long span of time, a long distance. And... Hello, my love. You it's can't like, push the door open. She did. Hi, baby. I don't think Cruella is the most evil on this list, but they had it at number one. I, and don't I think it's think because she's of the a, puppies. Yeah. I get it. Uh, the whole idea of killing the puppies and people are very the coats. sentimental towards puppies. I agree. I look, I love puppies. I love kitties. It's pretty darn evil. It's pretty darn evil. 
I'm going to give Cruella. I give her four. I'm giving her four. Yeah, four no, apples. like wanting to just like hunt she baby those puppies. Crazy is like, yeah. she was driving. She does have that cool car though. I like so, puppies. I like kitties though. I think if she was hunting kitties, she would get a five for me. So there are some characters that were not mentioned in in screen. Was it Game Rant? Game Rant. Game Rant's list. Sally doing that. I think deserve to be spoken. Stuff. I think we're going to mention them, and we're going to give them a rating too. Okay. Right? Super You're, quick. I think super quick because this this episode has been going on a little bit longer than usual, right? Yeah. All right. What about Mad Madam Mim? Mad Madam Mim gets two. Two apples. One apple. She's just a gal, you guys. She's just a girl. She's just a girl. Leave her alone. She one didn't apple. do anything wrong. One apple. Boom. She's a one apple villain. What about Lady Tremaine from Cinderella? Okay, Lady Tremaine, I think, is going to get at least three for me, maybe four, because she just hated Cinderella because Cinderella was her stepdaughter, and I think that's crazy. And then she tried to, like, like making Cinderella, like, be the, like, house wife basically is like crazy to me and like i don't know just the 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 power play there is evil she's mean she's evil she's conniving and she's just not nice i'm gonna give her three and a half apples she's stinky yeah three and a half apples next one next one next not on the list but on our list mother gothel from tangled mother gothel is a narcissist selfish crazy person she kidnapped that girl she kidnapped that baby baby for her selfish reasons and then tried to kill Rapunzel's like Flynn. I have a question. And to, like, how could Rapunzel sing the song when she was a baby to make the hair work? No, she sang the song. No, Rapunzel would sing the song. In the movie, Rapunzel's singing the song while she's doing the hair, while she's brushing the hair. And then she, the baby couldn't sing the song. No, Gothel sings the song when she was a baby. Ladies and gentlemen, who you guys let us know who's right. Who sings the song? No, she sings the song as like a as like a toddler, as like a five year old. But like before she could speak, the Gothel song it? Gothel sings the song. So it doesn't matter who sings the song as no, long as you sing as it. As long as you sing it. When Gothel breaks into the Do castle to, to take it? the baby, she sang the song. All right. Anyway, I'd give Gothel, give Gothel five. She kidnapped that baby. That's crazy. Gothel gets um, five too. She was pretty evil. She tried to kill. She did. She stabbed. She him. stabbed Flynn Rider. Yeah, and she hired those thugs and hired the guy. Literally, and then got no. them arrested. Right? No, because she's literally so selfish. Five apples. She's like, I get her. She's like, I whole, understand, she's whole, but like, whole dang, apple girl. Grove. Right? Syndrome. Syndrome is just a gal. Also, didn't do anything wrong. Two apples. I'm gonna say zero apples for Syndrome. Well, one, he did kidnap. He tried to kill the kids. Well, he tried to kill the kids. He kidnapped the adults and then destroyed the city. He's just angry. He's just angry. You should have taken him in, Mr. Incredible. He should have been Incredible Boy. It wouldn't have happened. All right. Hans from Frozen. I hate Hans. Hans gets five apples. As a woman. Is that evil? As a woman, Hans gets five apples, bro. Because if, um, okay, if a guy treated me the way Hans treated Anna, you would want to like shake his neck really hard. I, Except you wouldn't because you're not Hans violent at all. Hans. I, I, I give Hans uh, three apples. Manipulated Anna, was mean to Anna, mm. lied to Anna. Absolutely not. No, right. disgusting. I can't believe this one did not make the list because, in my mind, this might be the most evil of them all. The word evil doesn't sound like a word anymore. Claude Frollo from The Hunchback. This guy scared Dude, me as a kid. I was terrified he of him. Is putting people to death. He had he had Quasimodo's mother killed, and then he he, he made Quasimodo feel like unappreciated. And then he's using his oh, he's all creepy with Esmeralda. He's just creepy. Like not only is he evil, he's creepy and weird. And he scared me as a kid, which is why I haven't seen this movie since I was like five years old. So Frollo is an op. He's really bad. He's uh, he's an op. He's weird. He's a sad, lonely loser. Five apples. But he's like. I mean, just so bad. I mean, really, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> really bad. I'm going to give him five apples. Give him six apples. All five apples. All right. That's our list. What's well, not our list? This episode is so long, guys. Check out the list from uh, Game Rant. Let's make this this outro super quick because this episode was long. It was long. All right. Mimi. So check out the lists. They will be linked in the description, I think. Maybe. And then potentially <laughs> maybe um, if I can get to it. And other than that, if you guys want to add input, I hope you guys played along. Feel free to send us an email, Disney symbol.gmail.com 
or send us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all at Disney Assembled. But if you guys want to support the show further, no, I already said that. No, I didn't. The her link to our Tee Public, Patreon, buy us a Dole Whip, all the other stuff is on our website, DisneyAssembled.com. Make sure to go check it out. Yeah, don't forget the question of the week. Send us an email with your answer. You know, what Disney dining places would you like us to go to if we happen to be back at Disney World at some point around New Year's Eve and the first week of January? We're not sure we're going to do that yet, but maybe we will. Let us know that. We have a YouTube channel, YouTube.com. Do a search for Disney Assembled at Disney Assembled on YouTube. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done that already. The best thing you do, though, if you want to help us out, so tell your friends about the show. Share it with your, your friends, your colleagues, your family members. Uh, and if you have the ability to do so, leaving us a kind rating and review on your app, on your podcast player of choice is very much appreciated. We really would consider you a friend if you took the time to do that nice rating and review. All right, Mimi, high five. High five. Good job. All right, this was a long episode. This was And we got it in episode. late at night, so we are... Way past our bed, my bedtime. <laughs> it's my bedtime too. I'm supposed to be in bed watching Bojack Horseman in the dark now. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. We hope this episode brought a smile to your face, an extra bit of magic to your day, and the important sprinkling of pixie dust to your week. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, see, see you real soon. soon. collect your belongings, watch your head and step, and take small children by the hand.